Today's lesson is all about CSS, custom CSS. Now CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. So when I heard the word style, I naturally thought about James Bond. And because the new James Bond movie is finally coming out later this year. But is it? <laughs> but is it? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see if it comes out. We'll see. So, I'm gonna show you some ways to add some custom CSS to your Webflow projects, but just a quick refresher to get us in the right headspace. The three basic coding languages of a web page are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, when I was learning all of this, the best way that I ever heard it described is that HTML is like the bones of a web page, giving it structure and formatting. CSS is like the skin, giving it style, texture, and appearance, while JavaScript is like the brain that tells it how to behave and what to do. But today we focus on CSS. So Webflow makes it super easy and gives you the power of CSS by just clicking buttons that correspond with specific CSS styling and code behind the scenes. But what's great is that you're also able to add your own custom CSS to give your project even more customization. So I'll show you three different ways that you can do this in your project. So the first method we'll be using is an HTML code embed. So here you'll see I have a lovely Daniel Craig 007 as a background image inside this div, and it's called Bondiv. That's the class name I've given it. Now, a quick tip to keep in mind, in class names on a published site, Webflow converts spaces to dashes and capital letters to lowercase letters. So things written like this will be converted to this. And since class names are very important in custom code, using lowercase letters and dashes in your class names from the start will help avoid any issues down the line. So I'll go ahead and add the embed element inside my body right at the top, press Command K, type embed. And remember this won't appear in your web page. it's just a reference to store any custom code you use that will affect elements on this page only. So I can go to the settings over here, open the code editor. I'll start by adding opening and closing style tags. So if you're not familiar with HTML or CSS, they use things called tags to enclose certain pieces of information. Anything CSS related lives inside a style tag and you start off the first tag like so. and then you can add another one with a little, forward uh, slash to close it out. So any CSS we write between here will be applied to our page. So to change the styling of an element, we can target the class name of that thing. So if we wanna change the size of our bond div, we first have to target the div itself. So we indicate the class name with a period or a dot, and the div is, has the class name of bond-div. And then we just add two curly braces, an opening and closing brace, and now anything we write inside of here will be affected to the bond div. So if I target our size, I can change the width and the height to something smaller, maybe 100 pixels instead. And then you just add a semicolon at the end to indicate the closed line of content. And now I can click Save, and you'll see that it's targeting our bond div and the size change is applied. So what's great about HTML embeds is that the changes are reflected live within your browser. I just click save and you'll see it happen automatically. So I can still use my Webflow editor to make certain style changes. I can still do the classic things. I can give this guy a border. I can make it a red border, increase the width. I can give it a border radius of 20 pixels. So you're still able to use the style editor and this is basically just creating CSS for you behind the scenes. So if you were to click uh, export code, Every change you make in your Webflow style editor is being applied here to this custom code. And it looks really ugly and crazy because you're adding a lot of different things, but not everything is possible within Webflow's native editor. So sometimes we have to use the CSS behind the scenes like we're doing now. So the second method of doing this is by going to your pages settings and pasting your style tag within the head tag. So if I click on pages, I'll go to our page one, which is where we are now. Scroll down and the custom code inside of our header tag is where any CSS would live. So I can do a similar process. I'll just create two style tags, opening and closing. Don't forget that forward slash. And I'll target the bond div again. And don't forget our period to indicate the class name. And remember this class name is referring to what we named the div over here. This is our class name selector. So those have to match for you to target them correctly. So now I can do the same sort of uh, width and height adjustments. Add the semicolons at the end, I'll click save. The only thing with the 
page settings is that it won't apply directly. So I'm gonna to have to publish to save my changes. And you'll see right now I have them set as 500 and 500 height and width. When we go to the publish site, you'll see the height adjustments have been applied. So the third method is a little more powerful in that it doesn't just apply to the page you're targeting, but rather your entire website. So you'll see here that I have a second page. It's pretty much identical to the first page with the same class names applied, bond div, bond quote, and there's a link here to navigate back and forth with page link. And you can just go back and forth, they're identical. Let's say I wanted to change this link color. Instead of adding code to each of these two pages individually, I can just go to my project settings and I'll click on custom code, this tab here, and you'll see head code. Remember, that's where all of our CSS happens. So I'm gonna add another style tag, just like we've been doing. And then I will target our page link. So it has the class page link. Remember the curly brace is there. And I'll just change the color of the text to green. Now, if I save changes, I'll have to publish this as well. And now we'll see here that our page one, we see our, our link is now green and page one has the same class name applied, so it also turns green. So there's no in-page styling for these to tell to do that. This is a site-wide custom code that will affect anything with the page link class. So keep in mind though, that the code in the direct page will take precedent over the one in your project settings. So if I change this link color in page one, I can add that embed element back in here. So in my editor again, I can paste some code and you'll see here I'm targeting the page link and instead of the green, I'm gonna tell this one to have red and I click save, save and close. And you'll see here that it is red. Remember the other one is only viewable on the published page. So if I publish this change, go back here, you'll see page one, because it has that in page embed element telling it to be red is red, but the other page does not have the in-page embed, and it's just pulling from the site-wide CSS settings, so it remains green. So any custom embed or page settings directly will override any site-wide settings. So another tip, if you think you're gonna have chunks of content that require the same CSS styling on multiple pages, and you don't wanna use the universal project settings and would rather see your changes live instead of publishing over and over, you can turn your embed element into a symbol. So if I want to have this red styling applied all around my website, I can just go to the embed that I have, and this is the thing that contains the code to make it red. I'll just click symbol, I'm gonna create a new symbol. I'll just type red text. Great, and now if I go to page two, this is the page that's green when you see it in the live view, I can just add this symbol into the page and you'll see, boom, it reflects live the change and it's red. And what's also great is if I make a change to the symbol itself, so if I go here, double click on my symbol and I go to the open the code editor, I can change the color to purple, save this, save and close. Now it's purple there and it'll also be purple wherever else the symbol is being applied. This saves you a ton of time. Say you have a website with 20 different pages all using this class, it'll be very useful. So when would you even need to use custom CSS? While Webflow offers a lot of different styling control, it can't do everything. So you may want to add your own CSS to create specific breakpoints or media queries for different screen sizes. You could also target odd or even items in a list or every last or sibling item to give it specific styling. You could also add specific styling for different browsers since behaviors can differ across Chrome, Firefox, Explorer, etc. There are a lot of powerful CSS selectors that can save you a ton of time and give you a lot of customization in your project. Head over to the MDN selector guide. I'll link it below in the description. That'll give you a good starting point of what sort of commands and code you can use to bring your project to life. So that's it for today. You might be perfectly content using the native Webflow styling panel, but should you ever want to add anything extra, now you know how to do that behind the scenes. Adding custom JavaScript is a similar process. I'll probably go over that in a future video, but until then, why don't you take a minute for yourself? Relax, maybe pour yourself a drink, preferably a martini, shaken, not stiff.